Hello and good afternoon. So today is the day fifth, I believe, of uh, recovery from the drug which is called social media. And uh, I'm actually recording this on a regular basis, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis as to what exactly is happening with myself, with my mental health, with my physical health, spiritual health, relations, productivity, finances, everything has, a, has an ultimate impact and you know ultimate positive impact the only thing that i'm kind of not having is the unlimited and untimely messages comments uh the likes the shares and everything the notifications basically so i'm trying to come out of the loop and coming out of the loop when especially you are considered to be as a modern day drug addict it's not an easy task especially when people around you they're telling you that you'll be back soon you'll be back in no time and uh, you know there, there is nothing wrong in them saying that because that's how most of the people are responding to somebody who is intending or either has left the social media. How exactly things have been progressing? Like today I had a seminar, I had a session as well. I've been approached by a couple of more universities to come and talk to their students as to how and why they should minimize the usage of social media. The unwanted desire, the desire of being wanted and praised by a lot of people and to get that attention is itself so toxic. And it's addictive as well at the same time because if you look at it, why would you share anything on social media? Why would you post anything on social media? Why would you want to share everything to the world? I mean, okay, you know what? If you really want to share it, why don't you share it with the people who are sitting around you? I mean, people have been made believe that businesses will not survive if there is no social media presence. And I, and I, I don't uh, completely agree with that because still there are so many businesses that don't really focus on Facebook. Because if you look at it, who exactly are the users of Facebook? I mean, it has given me substantial amount of revenues, but at what cost? I was agitated, I was anxious as well to a certain extent, and I was constantly at the verge of uh, exploding. The dopamine that I was getting in my brain was a bit too much and you know that's how it's been programmed because dopamine is an addictive chemical you crave dopamine you go for dopamine so back in the days when people used to get dopamine it's either and primarily only by creating something they create something, they construct something and what I'm saying creating something it doesn't necessarily mean that you are creating a project or a product or a service. No. Sometimes you create discussions, sometimes you create ideas. But now the originality, the genuineness of the human mind has been taken away. Pretty much people around you, they are physically there, but mentally they're gone just like a zombie. It has a zombie effect on you. And right now, not a lot of people are actually talking about leaving social media in the Pakistani region. And because of that, I am going to be facing a lot of resistance, a lot of persuasion by those who are totally making, you know, big bucks through social media. And I'm, you know, that's absolutely fine. But you can make those things. You can still make money. You can still create wealth. But to have that desire to create something overnight, because not to forget, social media has come up with the with the term it's called going viral, overnight success, overnight hits, multiple shares, millions of views. That ultimate and the unique selling proposition to have that sort of a feeling that what if this would break the internet? What if I become the next talk of the town? What if? So that what if actually making us get back to those slots. It's like a slot machine, just like in a gambling zone, just like in a casino. So you have a slot machine, you put the coin in, and then you pull that. 
and you're expecting, you're hoping it might hit a jackpot, might hit a jackpot. But what's the cost of that? You're spending your money. In this one, you're not spending your money directly, but you're spending something which is way more than money, and that is your personal peace, your mental peace, your uh, relationships, big time, your productivity, and the majorly, your time is being wasted. Yes, people still would argue that, oh, you know what, I'm actually creating a lot of things as well, I'm making a lot of money, I'm writing a lot of stuff as well. If you're gonna do that, do that. But I, I humbly would believe that there must be and there should be a time limit to it as well. But then again, how can you time limit a drug? Trust me, it's a, it's, it's a drug because now I'm feeling in the f first few hours, I was at the verge of breaking and going back to the routine. But I was like, no, you know what, this is, it has to stop. And through that way, I could be able to communicate myself. I could be able to explore those areas of my personality, of my mind as well, within a matter of hours. It, it, it didn't take me decades. It didn't take me weeks. It took me hours. When I went into complete isolation, solitude, quietness, calmness, stillness, that was majorly missing, primarily and only because of too much usage of social media. So, as you can see, I, I feel great. I feel absolutely brilliant. I feel that I am literally recovering. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gladly expect, accepting it. That yes, I am recovering, probably I'm in rehab. And I hope, and I'm sure, that it is going to last forever. So unless you taste this particular dish of not using social media, you probably wouldn't understand what I'm trying to tell you. So give it a try, leave it for at least seven days and see for yourself that how exactly you would eventually progress in your life, not just in the material terms, but in mental, spiritual, psychological terms as well. I wish you all nothing but well and good luck. Thank you.